So I don't want to waste anybody's time because I know you have to study, but these are just some tips for the day of the exam, before you go to the exam, during the exam, and after the exam. And welcome back to Living Life with Your Favorite Nurse. If you made it this far and your exam is just around the corner, I just want you to remember that there's a reason that you made it this far and this exam has nothing on you. So I don't want to waste anybody's time because I know you have to study, but these are just some tips for the day of the exam, before you go to the exam, during the exam, and after the exam. They're really important, so keep watching. So the easiest tip, honestly, is come prepared. I know everyone talks about, you know, coming prepared, but it's actually a tip that people forget about and then it actually affects the day of the exam. When I say come prepared, come prepared. Make sure you set your alarm clock to the right time that you need to wake up. If you live with anyone, just let them know that your exam's tomorrow and just in case you don't hear your alarm, let them wake you up. Also, make sure that you bring all the required stuff that you need to this test center. I can't remember if I had to bring a paper or anything, but I know I needed my ID. So take a look at what the email says from the N, C, B, C, S, B, whatever it's called, and make sure you have everything that they require. Definitely don't just look at it the night before, look at it, you know, so you're not scrambling. But before you go to your exam again, look at the paper and just make sure that you have everything they need. Because you already have so much to deal with, you don't need anyone saying you don't have the required stuff and sending you back home and then you're not able to do your exam. There's just so many other stuff that you're going through and that should not be an issue that you have to go through that day. They're not lenient at the test center. They take your fingerprint, they do a lot of stuff. Like, I feel like they really don't care if you don't have the required documents and they will send you back. So you have to have everything you need. That's just tip number one, and it's really important. Tip number two, pretty simple, easier said than done, don't psych yourself out. Don't freak out and don't panic. I like to say that there is a reason you are where you are. You know, you're smart, you're intelligent, you got through nursing school, whether this is your first degree, second degree, you made it through no matter what was happening in your life. You are a strong person and you got this. For me, there was a lot of people or let's say a couple people outside the door before we went in and they were talking like, oh, did you study th this? Did you study that? And I quickly took my bag and went that way. Like I can't hear all those things before I write an exam. It's gonna stress me out. Like during school, I never liked to be with people before an exam. Um, because I, it would stress me out like definitely I would like to study and study right before with my friends but not like five or ten minutes before the exam because people saying like oh did you cover this did you cover that and I'm like no it would just it just did too much to me and it's too late if you haven't studied it fine forego it you will be okay but talking to people about the exam and working yourself up it really isn't it so you know, you don't have to isolate yourself, but just make sure like you're in your space and you're okay. All right, tip number three. Now, right before the exam, you're in front of, you know, the computer and you're about to start. I know not everybody is religious, but if you can, say a quick prayer. There's nothing wrong with saying a quick prayer and, you know, just thanking God for everything that he's done for you and just, you know, giving you help, giving you grace, giving you strength. And honestly, it's, it's so simple. So try it. Now during the exam, you're writing the exam now, you're, you're clicking, clicking, clicking. It's actually important to visualize every question. Do not be quick with your responses. I know there's a timer, but honestly, I really haven't heard of anyone like not having enough time. Like definitely it's probably possible, but there's no point on rushing. Take your time and visualize the questions. I know like math questions, you can't really visualize. But any scenario question, what would you do, or things like that, put yourself, if you want to close your eyes, close your eyes, put yourself in that situation and think about what would you do and go with that, okay? Don't be so quick to choose an answer. Think about it, make your decision, and choose that. Tip number four is also when you're still writing the exam. Tip number five, this one is huge. Trust your gut. I step a lot with this one in university. I would choose an answer and then change it after because I thought, you know what, it can't be this one, it has to be this one. 
honestly advice from another nurse that I got before I started nursing school was go with your gut and that's exactly what I didn't do and a lot of times when we got to review the exams I'd be like oh I, I'd still see like where I circled and where I erased I'd still see where I shaded in in the freaking scantron and erased it and I'd be so pissed because I had the answer but I erased it so especially with this exam, you cannot go back if you decide to change your mind. So go with your gut and stick to it. You know your info, you know your content, you know the right answer. Don't doubt yourself um, and don't add more stuff into the question. Whatever the question is, just use that to answer your question. Don't add other things, but what if, but what if. Whatever you see there is actually what the question is about and go from there. Sometimes it might actually, I noticed some of the questions seem so simple that they became hard, but it was, it was simple and I tried to make them more difficult than it was, but it was simple. So if it's simple, take it, choose your answer and keep going. Tip number six, don't panic if it doesn't shut down at 75. I know again, this one is easier said than done, but if you start panicking after question 75, you're gonna lose your mojo. Honestly, it might shut down at 76. There's a lot of people that it shut down at 76 or 77, but if they let themselves panic and get overwhelmed at the fact that it didn't shut down at 75, maybe it wouldn't have shut down at 77 because they were just so panicked and they started messing up and they were no longer actually clicking the right answers or choosing the right answers. So I know it's, again, it's not that easy to not panic, but you don't know when it's going to shut off. You just have to keep going. You have to stay calm and, you know, keep doing your best and things like that don't let it unbalance you don't let it shake you keep going you're fine you're doing okay you can still pass in 260 something questions keep doing and don't let it face you in school they told us like the average it shuts down was like 160 or one something and you don't even need the average too but 75 is a great goal and I was very blessed that it did, but there's still a lot of people that didn't shut off at 75. They passed, they were fine, so don't let that bother you. Don't overthink, please don't overthink. It will shut off, eventually. Tip number seven, the exam is flipping over. Hallelujah. After every exam in university, I would go home and go over my notes and be like, oh, I got that wrong. Oh, I got that wrong. Uh, again so try to go home and actually not do that I wouldn't say throw out all your papers and delete everything just yet because you know you still have to wait for your results you can have faith but you know just take a second but try not to go back and read your notes and go over things and attempt to study because it's over it's over you've done what you can do you passed by God's grace, you're fine, you're okay, so don't stress it. Go out and eat ice cream, go hang out with your friends or chill alone, just do something. You made it, you finished the big, you finished the crazy NCLEX, it has nothing on you, you got this. So don't let it get to you even after you finished, okay? Please, please don't let it get to you even after you've already completed it. It's already taken too much from you your money and your time. So again, guys, I wish everybody luck. You guys are all blessed. You guys all got this. The NCLEX has nothing on you. I can't wait to hear everyone's success stories. And again, if you know you didn't pass this first time, I hope you can find a way to help you pass the second time. Leave me comments, send me messages on Instagram or Twitter or wherever. I'll, I'll reply you as soon as I can. And I hope that one day we will all be nurses. Have a blessed, blessed week and keep living life from your favorite nurse.